in the script two A, we'll now start working and learn a new concept of masking. Here we have loaded the GSW dataset. We have selected the max extent band. Let's create some risk params. So uh, when we uh, look at this, this is a binary image, just zeros and ones. So we'll do min zero, max one, and we'll do a palette going from white to blue. And we'll add this to the map. And once we run it, we see that uh, we have this black and white image. This is the max extent of the water. If I inspect it, you can see I have this blue area, which the pixel value is one, and the zero is where there is no water was ever detected. What if I want to just show the blue pixels? I want to kind of set the white pixels to transparent. It'd be nice just to see the base map along with just the blue pixels because the white pixels essentially are not useful to us. Right? It just so shows where there was no water. Can we set those pixels to transparent? If I want to do some analysis and I want to exclude those pixels, the white pixels from my analysis, how do I do this? Uh, this is done in uh, typically in remote sensing in GIS using the concept of no data. If you can set certain pixels to no data, then they'll be excluded from any visualization or analysis. In Earth Engine, this is done using mask. So let's learn about masking, and then we'll come back to this code and see how we can apply masking in Earth Engine. I want to switch back to the same presentation that we were covering. Uh, a bit down here, we have this some slides on image masking. Just a few slides to explain the concept. In Earth Engine, whenever you upload an image or you use an image that was already part of a collection, every image is accompanied with a mask. A lot of times when you look at the satellite imagery, there'll be kind of a slanted image. And in a gridded image format, you can only store like you know, rows and columns of uh, pixels. So how do you represent those pixels at the edges? They are set as no data. So if you inspect those values, It'll be shown as no data. This, you know, or in our engine, it shows a mask. Uh, anything that is masked will not be shown on the map. Even when you say, "Give me a count of pixels," the masked pixels will not be counted. So they'll be just set as no data. Uh, you can check what is the mask of an existing image by calling image.mask. Uh, so if you get this, the mask will be a binary image one zero one where there is you know data zero where there is no data. Now. If we want to set certain parts of the image to transparent or exclude certain parts, we want to update the mask. This is useful where you are looking at uh, an image and so there is a cloud here. I want to exclude those cloudy pixels. So I want to update the image's mask to exclude those cloudy pixels. In our case, we have this one zero image and we want to exclude the zero pixels. So you need to update the mask. The way to do this is call by calling the update mask function. Uh, the update mask function takes one parameter where you need to give it another image and that image has to be a binary image. Wherever you, in that mask image, if you have one, those pixels will be retained. The pixels where you, your mask says zero, they'll be excluded. Let's see a visual example to understand this better. Uh, we have an image, uh, the, this is a six pixel by six pixel image. If you want to mask certain pixels, I can supply it with an image like this. So this is my another image where I have certain pixels as one and certain pixels as zero. And if I say image dot update mask with this mask image, my result will look like this. Wherever there was zero, those pixels are now masked. They are set to no data. This uh, is similar to if you've done any other kind of uh, image processing, this is how masking works, where you have another image and that is used to mask the data. There are a few questions. How is masking different from two float you explained yesterday? So the two float uh, stuff that we did yesterday was because when we export the data, the masked pixels will be stored as a number called NAND, not a number. So that to store the NAND, you cannot store it in a byte data type. So we had to convert to float so that when the GOT format can store the data as a uh, no data value. So it just the uh, way GOT format stores the mask, we had to convert that. Someone's asking, what's the difference between masking and clipping? Excellent question. 
when you clip something, the pixels outside the clipping boundary are set as mask. So internally, that's what's happening. When you clip something, that uh, uh, is all the stuff outside the clipping boundary are set as mask. But clipping is done with a vector data. Uh, you can do masking with raster data. Another question on GRC data is still 2021. Can we know the max water extent in 2022, 23? Uh, the GRC data is usually updated after a year or so. So I think we can expect the 2022 version sometime soon. Uh, and once I think in a year or so, we might get the 2023 version. They have to run the analysis into this. If you want to know uh, the extent in this, there are many other techniques that will cover in the course. So you can do it yourself using the latest Lancet data or latest uh, Sentinel 2 data. So the question on uh, clipping and extract by mask concept used by QGIS or ArcGIS works in the same logic. Uh, yes, I think uh, mask is a kind of unique uh, terminology that Earth Engine uses. That terminology is called no data. So if you see any reference to no data in ArcGIS or QGIS, that is referring to the same concept. The concept that I want to get to is this uh, concept where, let's say I have an image like this. And our current goal is that we want to remove all zeros from our analysis. So we can give it another image that looks like this and say, take my original image, take this mask image and use that uh, with the update mask function. So we say uh, image dot update mask with this mask and you will get this. Right? Only where there are ones will be retained and all the zeros will be masked. Okay? So if our goal is to remove zeros from an image, and our image is just a binary image, we can choose another image like this and we can remove the zeros. But notice our image and the mask carefully. Are they the same image? Right? If we have a binary image and we want to remove the zeros, we can use the same image as the mask. So if I want to remove zeros from a binary image, I can say, take my image, update mask with the same image and my zeros will be removed. This is called self-mask in Earth Engine, a very commonly used function where you can say you have a binary image and you say self-mask and you suddenly will see zeros are set as no data. This is very hard to understand unless you kind of understand what's going on behind, but this is what self-mask does. It uses the image itself as a mask and removes the zeros. So let's try this in our code and see how it works. So here we have one zero image. Our water image is the one zero binary image. So let's create a new image, water mask, and I can say water dot self mask. And if I replace this here, notice the difference. Now I only see the blues. I don't see the whites. So if I inspect the blues, it still says one, but see what happens when I click on any other area. It says it's masked, right? If I expect any area which is masked, it'll say it's masked. And now it won't be shown on the map. It won't be used in any analysis. It also creates for a much nicer visualization where you are just focusing on the pixels that uh, are valid. Other uh, no data values are set as uh, no data as a mask, right? So this is the masking concept. We'll use mask a lot. In Earth Engine, whenever you're processing any optical data, we'll apply a cloud mask. We'll learn about it a little later, and we'll do the same thing. We'll exclude the cloudy pixels of an image from any analysis or any compositing or analysis. Uh, similarly, when we have a binary image and we want to visualize just the ones, just the area of interest, we'll use um, the self mask to remove the zeros. Okay, so let's do an exercise. For the exercise, we'll need to understand one more uh, data layer that comes with this uh, data set. Let's look at the early part of the presentation. We have one more band in this global surface water data set called seasonality. Uh, this is a band in the global surface water image. You select the band and you'll see that this band has all the pixels ranging from value from one to 12, indicating that over the 30th period, if you look at all the months, in each month, how much, uh, uh, how many months the water was present. So you look at a permanent water, you'll see value close to 12, that all 12 months of the year there was water. If the value is like four, that means four months out of 12, on average for the last 38 years, this pixel had water. 
this is a very useful data set to mask permanent water or temporary water. I've used it quite a bit. We'll use it in uh, flood analysis where we say uh, any place where there is water more than six months a year, we'll consider them as permanent water. So we'll not consider any flooded regions uh, that appear inside of that. So great, uh, very useful as a mask or as a way to understand what is seasonal, what is what's, what is permanent water. Okay. So let's do the exercise where you'll need to work with this data. Vigna, you can explain the exercise. Yeah. 